Xbox Live employs a rating system called True Skill, which uses the Bayesian inference algorithm to determine a player's skill level. In this video, we're going to learn about True Skill's API, how it works, and I'll even show you how I used it to work out my favorite tennis players right at the end. Let's open up a Jupyter Notebook, and I'm going to assume that you've done pip install True Skill. And now we're going to, from the True Skill library, we're going to import the rating class. And then once we've done that, let's just call it. And you can see back, we get back uh, what's a normal distribution of a rating. And it's got a mu of 25, so that's the actual rating itself, and then a sigma of 8.333, and that's the certainty in the rating. So at the moment, quite uncertain. Now we're going to bring in a function that lets us visualize the distribution for that rating. So we've got this function here called visualize distribution. And what it does is it creates some uh, values on the x-axis, sort of going from the minimum, minimum, which is four standard deviations away from the average, up to the maximum, which is four uh, standard deviations above uh, the average. And then we're going to compute the y-axis, which is a probability distribution function, which works out the likelihood of each of those values for a given mu and sigma. And then finally, we're going to draw a line chart over those values and fill it in under the curve using the Plotly library. And so if we now call that for the base rating, we can see we get it centered, it's centered around 25, but there's a big spread, right? It goes all the way from 10 up to around 40. So we aren't really certain about this rating at all. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in a, a couple of functions. We're going to bring in rate and rate uh, one versus one. Now we're going to start by using rate one versus one. So this is a shortcut function to rate just two players in a head to head match. So let's do that. So we're going to create P1 uh, and P2, and then we're going to call the rate function for P1 and P2. And what we're saying is the one on the left, so i.e. P1 uh, won this match. Uh, and so if we run it and we can see the result, you can see P1's uh, mu has gone up, P2's has gone down, and their sigmas have both come down. So we're a little bit more certain about their rating. Let's now do the same thing, but we'll save the new ratings to P1 and P2. We can also have a draw or a tie uh, between players by passing in drawn equals true, uh, and then we'll, we'll get back and print out the P1 and P2 uh, afterwards. And you can see P1 has come down a little bit and P2 has gone uh, up a little bit because we would have expected uh, P1 to win since it, it had that higher rating after the first win. Now let's run that match 10 times and we'll, we'll let P1 uh, win each time. And you notice their sigma is going um, is going down for both of them uh, on, on, each, uh, on each iteration, and the rating is going up for P1 and down for P2. Now let's visualize the ratings at the end of that. So we're gonna have a look at the base rating and then we'll have a look at P1 and P2. So remember we've seen P1 has won 11 times and we've had the one draw. So you can see the base is, is in the middle and it looks a lot more spread out now and it is obviously quite uncertain. So it's, it's sort of spread out across the whole uh, chart. Uh, P1 in the blue is now between, somewhere between 25 and 35 is our, is our certainty. And then sort of P2 uh, in the red over the other side, it's now there's now quite a quite a big gap between them. So uh, P2 is sort of between 15 and 25. So we'd expect blue to win uh, or P1 uh, to win every time they played P2. Now let's have a look at what we can do with the rate function. So this takes in what they call rating groups. So I, it's an array of arrays. So we'll create six players, and then we're going to do exactly the same as what we did with P1 and P2 before. But notice this time we pass in an array, and then we've got an array for P1 and an array for P2 as well. And then the result is the same. Now, the cool thing with this is not that we can uh, write like a kind of more complicated uh, syntax. It's that we can do n versus n ratings. So we can rank pairs of players, for example. So we can say, I want to rate uh, P1 and P2 versus P3 and P4. And we can get the result from that. And um, we can also specify weights. So imagine that one person did most of the, the work or one person came late to the match or something like that. And then we want to give more um, of the rating change to the other person. So let's say we've got a, a, a match between P1 and P2 and P3 and P4. And we're saying P1 did most of the work. So we give P1 a weight of one and P2 will get a weight of half. And you can see the, the, the adjustment in the, in the ratings is slightly uh, affected by that. And finally, it doesn't have to be just two pairs against each other. We can specify as many as we want. And we can also specify the rank if it's not the same as the ranking group order. So for example, here we've got a match between uh, P1 and P2 together, P3 and P4 together, and, and P5 and P6 are playing on their own. And we're saying the ranking is actually not, uh, not the order that we've seen. Instead, first is P1 and P2, second is P5, third is P3 and P4, and then last was P... Uh, P6. And you can see there's a, the, the adjustment is, is different depending on whether there was an individual player and whether there were two players. Now, the last couple of weeks, we've had the Wimbledon tennis tournament. And in the first week, there were so many simultaneous matches that I didn't know what to watch. So I thought it'd be cool to create a little app that gives me pairs of matches and has me pick my favorite. We'll then feed my selections into True Skill and see if it can work out my favorite players. This is the homepage uh, for the app. So you can see there are two uh, 
two uh, sub pages. We've got select matches. And then first of all, let's have a look at the player rankings page. And so you can see here, we've got all the players uh, in their uh, ATP ranking order. And they've got a, a default of 25 with the uh, uncertainty of 8.3. And then we've got this page here, uh, and this gives me infinite matches. So we'll have a look. You can kind of kind of select through the matches, choose which one you like. If you don't have a preference, click I don't have a preference, and it treats that as a draw. And if we speed that up <laughs> and do that, do that a few times, and then we'll come back to the ranking page, and we can see what it's come up with based on the comparisons that I did so far. So you can see we've got Djokovic at the top, TFO in second, Sitspas in third. Uh, and if we did it more times, we would sort of see those see those rankings change. And I'll put a link to the code in the description. Now I don't have any other. Uh, videos about rating algorithms, but if you like Jupyter Netbooks, have a look at this video up here about GP SQL, a plugin that lets you run SQL directly in a notebook.